Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are finally getting into some electronicals. Quite a few guys mentioned on the last video you wanted to see actual data of the rocket engines and I've been wanting to put together a, an actual test stand that would measure the thrust of the engines for years now and just never got around to it. <laughs> the kind of beautiful thing about having a YouTube channel is you guys egg me on to do do the shit I've always wanted to do, but just, you know, always have been too busy or, or never really got together the brass to actually do it. So, what I have here is an Arduino with uh, just an LCD keypad shield on it. Basically, I, I found a code online, uh, let me give credit where credit's due, Arduino Model Rocket Motor Test Stand by Nick Achikina and Len Johnson. And they put together an awesome, awesome little packet here. And I'll throw a link to this in the description in case any of you guys want to, you know, do the same thing. But absolutely phenomenal little setup. I grabbed a load cell, which also came with the HX711 board off Amazon for like $8, $9, something like that. Super cheap. And there's a jumper there that you can solder for 80 hertz. So it'll actually grab 80 data points per second. Default, they come 10, so you want to... Uh, get rid of the 10 jumper and put in an 80. So just taking a look at the way uh, the circuit operates here, you can see I have my momentary switch. And when I activate that, it'll set a uh, 10 second countdown. You'll see this LED flashing. And then after that 10 seconds, it'll fire the relay, which I'll have connected to the electric igniter. It'll also start acquiring data and sending it out the uh, USB port to a laptop or whatever I have nearby. So you can see. It's now activated, counting down, and we should see the relay fire. Boom! There goes your electric igniter. It's acquiring data. Once you get that into, uh, into Excel, you can generate a, a curve and actually see the characteristics of your engine. Or uh, I should say motor. It's a rocket motor. There's no moving parts. So it's not an engine. So just to cobble the stand together here, gonna get her reasonably well centered. Getting the midi titty on there. Yeah, 15 seems right. Looks like that's center to center. And same there, 15. The uh, one thing to keep in mind about these, the base mounting screws are M5s. And the upper, the actual scowl portion, are M4s. So just uh, something that could catch you up there. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so you can see we got a nice little gap there for the plate to deflect a little bit. And we're basically gonna do the same thing up top, except in reverse and with M4s. So nothing too exciting there. So just got back from the computer, did a little calibration with this sucker. It still seems to, the zero kind of seems to float around a little bit. It's uh, a bit weeble wobbly, and I think that's due to noise from the HX711 board. From what I've been reading online, it's not the best, or this particular board isn't the best one out there for uh, for keeping noise to a minimum. But got it reasonably well calibrated at this point. It's it's within probably 10 or so grams, so we're seeing 410 here. And we're seeing 411, 412 there. So on the money for that, let's see a little a little heavier package. This is 1130, 1142, 1143. So pretty on the money. It's it's not perfect. You're not going to be weighing out Tylenols with this sucker, but it's uh, it's reasonably there. All right, so we are hooked up, and what I'm going to do is go into the serial monitor here, and you can see it's connected to the HX711, and when we fire it. So it's going to give the 10 second delay, it'll fire the relay which would then fire our, our electric igniter and I'll just press on the board to see how the numbers... Yep, so three presses and we'll let it run out. Now of course a rocket you would see one big impulse and then it would kind of level out to a lower value and then drop off your typical rocket engine. Alright, so after interpolating the uh, data a good bit. You can see we have our three pulses, which are when I pressed on the, the load cell, probably about 2750, 
2600 and then 3000 grams of force is what I applied to the load cell. This is really what we're looking for. This will tell us how much thrust our rocket creates. We can see the curve, we can see how long the duration of the burn is. So before going ahead and testing a rocket, I just want to get this sucker hooked up and test the relay circuit, make sure it'll actually fire an igniter. You can see here I have a separate power source for the ignition just because it could potentially be a pretty large current draw and I don't want that killing the Arduino. So we'll zoom in on the little E-match there right in the center of the frame and let's tell the Arduino to get to work. So there's the 10 second countdown. Well, I saw it move. What I'm thinking is potentially the nichrome wire burn out too quickly and didn't ignite the pyrogen on the E-match. So let's try another using the oral wire strippers here. Gotta love nature, build them right in. So we got the E-match right here and I'm gonna command it to count down and hopefully fire. Huh, something is not quite right here. I think it might just be the, the massive inrush of current might just be blowing out the E-matches too quickly. Typically I ignite them from a 9 volt battery source which takes a second or two to actually heat up the nichrome. So I think it's just, I think it's too much current. I think that's the problem. So let me go grab a 9 volt battery instead of this big old lead acid and see if that might change the game. Alright, so we got our 9 volt. Let's, uh, let's see if she works now. Fresh E-match, doing the countdown thingy. Wow, there we go. That was the problem. Too much current from that 12 volt battery. Or I guess, too much power in one instant. God damn, that E-match exploded. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Ah, the beautiful smell of smokeless powder. Oh, jingle my balls, jingle my balls, jingle my balls, and cut. So you can see our large three quarter inch diameter engine has uh, 34.12 grams of propellant and the half incher has 9.68 grams. So, pretty big difference and I'm really curious to see how that's gonna play out on the test stand when we actually compare the data. Do a reset. Looks like we're ready to acquire data. Countdown. Don't blow up my wife's laptop, please. Holy shit! Flawless! Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. Couldn't have gone better. Alright, so the three quarter was successful. Now we're going to test the half inch engine. Let's see how she does. Reset and zero it. So this essentially tears the scale when you hit the reset. And we are connected. Good to go. Let's fire her up. Safety glasses. That was pretty funky. We had like two, it almost chuggled. That was strange. Still, good test though, we got the data. So let's go take a look at it now. Just doing all the data interpolation here in Excel. So I'm gonna print these suckers out and show you guys. All right, we're back in the great indoors here where it's not cold as a witch's tit. I think I got frostbite on my penis out there. But, uh, so, the half-inch engine, 658.4 grams of thrust. That is pretty freaking awesome in my book. Now, you can see during the test we had a bit of a, a kind of double spike of pressure. Kind of odd, I'm not sure what would have caused that. Uh, maybe something funky with the grain, but you can see we have another spike here. Probably around 180 grams of thrust. And total duration for each of these is probably around like uh, two seconds or so of active propellant burning. Now for the three-quarter engine, we generated a whopping 2,683 grams of thrust. That is insane. And I mean, the thrust curve is beautiful. Uh, I would have preferred to see kind of reverse having a, a more vertical leading edge and then 
a uh, slightly more tapering tailing edge but still I mean this is one hell of an engine beautiful so the Arduino worked we got excellent data from this sucker well guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed huge thank you to my patrons who made this project possible I would not have been able to do all this without the patrons and, uh, and you guys kind of egging me on to actually make a proper test stand for these rockets so thank you so much to all my supporters out there Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can actually get notified when I post. YouTube seems to kind of hate this channel. <laughs> I also have a Patreon page set up if you guys want to help support projects like this. Uh, I can continue to build bigger and better things and, and maybe even someday get a proper camera because I think this thing was made in 2003. <laughs> Piece of junk. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. Oh, sweet baby Jeebus. I just realized. Oh, man, my old engineering professors would not have been happy. Oh, I forgot to put my horizontal and vertical <laughs> labels. Jesus, I might as well have just drawn a squiggly line on paper. Nobody will know what this is now. Shit, I screwed up.